Welcome everybody, my name is Christian and today I'm going to be doing the next section of my series on Star Wars Armada Upgrade Rankings. This one is going to be for Turbo Lasers and Ion Cannon Upgrades and I'm going to start with the Turbo Lasers. The Turbo Laser Upgrade slot is available for both versions of the Imperial Star Destroyer and both versions of the Victory Star Destroyer. The Rebels have turbo laser upgrade slot for the Nebulon B, the MC-80, both the Liberty and the Home 1 version, the Assault Frigate, the MC-30, and the CR-90A. I just want to acknowledge all these have their uses. None of these are particularly terrible, but there's just so many of them, and some have to be better than others. So for number 9... I'm putting slave turrets. It's useful only on Nebulon Bs and particularly Salvation, but Spinal Armament is so much better bargain and it's only three points more. The slave turret gives you one more red dice, but you can only attack once. So that removes the incentive to double arc or even do an anti squadron roll or if it's a ship that allows gunnery teams, you should always have gunnery teams or try to double arc rather than just doing one attack that's slightly better. One red dice is not worth that many points to also sacrifice that upgrade. And what's particularly damaging about this is that if your opponent chooses advanced gunnery and you make this your objective ship, you can still only do one attack, even though you would normally do two. So if you put this on a ship that doesn't have gunnery team, like a MC-80, you're just completely shooting yourself in the foot, and you should never choose that objective. So for the fact that it makes you weaker on certain objectives, and it's only red dice, and now spinal armament is so much better, no one should be using slave turrets anymore. So... That's how I feel about that one. Number eight, heavy turbo lasers. It's rarely worth the number of points because braces is the main token everyone wants to use. It's definitely the most powerful token, especially for those big hitting ships. For six points, it means that they can only reduce it by one if they use defense thing, if they use a second token. But between the accuracies and you can only shed away so many certain points with a redirect. It just doesn't make any sense. Using X-17 turbo lasers would be so much better because that means you can only redirect one. This is the opposite. It's like you can only brace one only if you do a second one. So for six points, I just don't see it as worthwhile. So number seven I have is H-9 turbo lasers. It has its uses, but losing a hit is never something you want to give up. But if paired with quad turbo lasers on the Liberty, it could be particularly useful. The fact that this one on one ship only can be paired with a quad turbo lasers gives it a very useful combo, but really only for that one. You only have so many red dice. And the fact that you can change one from a hit to a crit to an accuracy is only useful if you maybe have an odd number and you want to take away their brace or you want to take away their evade, which is a double. So it does have some uses, but for eight points, I'd much rather just put a different upgrade on there. So that's why it's number seven, but it still has some uses. Number six. The XX9 Turbo Lasers. And these are particularly useful if you have a Admiral like Odama that allows you to modify and pick those critical effects. So instead of having just one, the first two damage cards are dealt. So for five points, that's a pretty useful power, particularly if you have Dodama. And if you have Dodama, then you should also have you know, precision strike and a lot of bombers, or you should have minefields, or you should have dangerous territory. You should try to stack up as many criticals as possible. And so XX9 turbo lasers are a good fit. 
particularly if you have it paired with a fire control team, which allows you to re exhaust that card and then resolve an additional critical effect. So you could have proton torpedoes do that critical effect and then still have your standard critical effect, which would be the first two damage face up. So in certain circumstances, you could do up to three critical effect card damage, and you could choose all three of those based off of the top four if you have Dodano. So since there's so many synergies that can be used, that's why this one's as high as it is, but still not as universally as useful as all the ones above it. Number five is Enhanced Armament. This is particularly useful for most rebel vessels because the assault frigate, the MC-30s, the MC-80s, they all like their sides. Their side arcs are massive and a lot of them, except for the MC-80, allow gunnery teams. So when you have an assault frigate with Akbar and you get to fire five red dice at two different targets, and maybe you're even turning those blanks into accuracies with home one's power. It's really useful. Now, if you already have Akbar and you're rolling five, I don't know if it's worth another 10 points just to roll six. But for all those side arc loving ships and you don't have Akbar, maybe it's worth the points to go ahead and throw on enhanced armament to give you that extra red dice. Number four is Spinal Armament. This is a new card and it's really, as I mentioned before, through slave turrets completely under the bus. It's nine points and it allows you to have an extra red dice in your front and your rear zone. It's great on Star Destroyers, it's great on the Liberty, and it's amazing on the Nebulon B, particularly with Salvation. So now for those points, you get those extra dice. So for the Nebulon B, you now have four. Maybe you do a Concentrate Fire Command, you get five. Suddenly, small base ship with an Evade and two Braces has, is throwing out five dice out of its front arc. And maybe now you can use your wide side arcs to do an anti-squadron roll or something like that. Between the Liberty being able to be paired with the Nebulon B in this upgrade, you're suddenly going to see way more Nebulon Bs used because I particularly didn't like Nebulon Bs because they're incredibly weak sides, there are no redirects. They were built to die because it's so much better to keep on going straight forward towards the enemy, even if it's certain doom, than it is to expose your side and have that much of a reduction in firepower. So this spinal armament is really going to increase the power of Nebulon Bs and the Liberty. And if you want your Star Destroyer to be particularly nasty, this is a good one too. So number three is also a new card, the Quad Turbo Laser Cannons. This is most powerful on larger ships and those that have dice modifiers because you're more likely to get that accuracy that you want. In combination of using it with home one is particularly devastating as well as leading shots and tokens. So it's 10 points, but with the right dice modifications, you can really get a lot of use out of it. Whenever you get an accuracy icon, you get to add another accuracy icon to your attack pool. It should be noted that if you have a token or leading shots, or some commander that allows you to use rerolls, that is now in your attack pool. And if you don't want that accuracy, you can reroll now with an extra dice. So it's 10 points, it's relatively expensive. You don't want to put it on a ship that doesn't have that many dice because you're not guaranteed to get an accuracy. You, you, you have a less chance of getting an accuracy. And if you do, there's not that much damage that the, you're going to be able to take away. Particularly, what makes this useful is when you're going up against this new flotilla that has a scatter. So now if you have one accuracy, you can actually take away the evade and the scatter. 
So there's a lot of combinations that this is going to be useful for, particularly on the Liberty, the first ship to have two turbo laser upgrades. So maybe it has spinal armament and quad turbo lasers. Or you want to absolutely guarantee that you have two accuracies and you put on H9 turbo lasers. So there's a lot of combinations that are going to be seen in a lot of games for a long time. And this is a very good upgrade. So number two is, in my opinion, the overpowered but very useful card X17 turbo lasers. It's the dread of anyone that put advanced projectors in their list because the XI-17s completely remove that power. It's only six points and it undoes that card completely. The defender can only move one damage to a different hull zone when they use a redirect. That is very useful and it's very useful against larger ships that have a lot of shields. MC-80s or MC-30s since they have so many shields or assault frigates. You can really hammer into them and just burn away their hull as well as more likely to be able to do those critical effects rather than having the shields absorb them. It's a great upgrade. I hope eventually they make it not so overpowered by changing the FAQ that advanced projectors still has some ability. But for now, it's number two. For number one, it's the turbo laser reroute circuits. Now, it's only useful on certain ships that have evades, but it's so useful on those ships and so much of an auto include that it still becomes number one in my book. The turbo laser reroute circuits are most useful on Corvettes because they have two evades to use and they don't have that many dice that they're shooting out. But suddenly those two or three red dice, if you have a concentrate fire or three if you have Akbar as your Admiral, suddenly that's guaranteed damage each time that you can just pick away at them. And then if you have an activating advantage, you can wait in order to have these go and you be able to use both of your evades knowing that you're not going to have to regret using them when you get fired upon. You can turn it into a double or you can turn it into a critical. Most of the time you put on a double, but you can go ahead and put on the critical if the double would make it odd and they would brace anyway, or you have Dodama and you want to get that critical effect. It's so useful. Guaranteed damage is amazing. So like I said before, it's most useful on the Corvette. Maybe sometimes you would want to put it on the Nebulon B, but I think it's better to have an extra dice with the spinal armament instead. But so good on Corvettes, it has to be number one. So that's the end of Turbo Lasers. The next one in this section is Ion Cannons. The ships that can take the Ion Cannon slot are for the Imperial side, the Interdictor, the VSD-2, both versions of the Imperial Star Destroyer, and the Raider-2. For the Rebels, all versions of the MC-80 and the CR-90B are the only two ships that have an Ion Cannon retrofit slot. So there's seven of these, and I'm going to go ahead and start with my bottom one. Ion Cannon Battery. They're five points, so they're pretty affordable, but whenever you get a blue critical, you can choose to discard one command token from the defender. If the defender doesn't have a command token, you can reduce the whole zone by one shield instead. This is very situational, because one, maybe it doesn't have tokens, and two, since this is a blue critical effect, all you're doing is reducing one shield, and now you can't do a regular critical effect if any of the damage gets through the hole. So for five points, only 25% of the time on a blue dice, you're going to get this. I just don't see it as worthwhile. But maybe you disagree, and if this has been useful for you, please let me know. But for now, I'm putting it at the bottom of the list. The next one I'm putting, and this is... 
has some uses, but it's just not all that useful in my opinion, is the high capacity ion turbines. This is a modification that allows you to have one blue dice extra in your left and right hole zones. However, it's eight points. It's pretty expensive for something that you're only going to be able to use at medium and close range, and it's only one extra blue dice. The red dice for advanced gunnery, I say it's more useful because that red dice is used so much more often, even though it has blanks and all that kind of stuff. But ships just aren't in medium range nearly as often as they are in long range. Maybe this would be useful for the torpedo frigate or an assault frigate and you want to have more accuracies. Maybe I'll change my mind as more GR-75s and assault carriers use that scatter against me. I really want to have more accuracies and have more accuracies you need more blue dice. But for now I just don't see it worth the 8 points. The next one for number five is NK-7 Ion Cannons. Again, very situational, can be really useful, but it's only when you get really lucky. So you may discard this card and force a defender to choose and discard one of their defense tokens. It's useful and... It can be devastating if you're lucky, but for 10 points, I put it on there and it's never hit, so it's completely wasted. Plus, the defender gets to choose which token they get rid of, so they can use the one that they're least likely to use. So, maybe go ahead and try it if you're a gambler, but for 10 points, i much rather have other upgrades or an additional squadron. The next one at number four is the SW7 Ion Cannons. So this allows you to have any unspent blue accuracies count as one damage. Guaranteed damage is always useful, particularly for blue heavy ships. So if you have this on a Corvette B, you're always going to do some damage. However, I prefer Dodonna's Pride, even if I don't have Dodonna on it. Being able to do that face-up critical, regardless of the shields, is pretty darn useful. And even though this is 5 points, it's only going to give you an extra damage here and there, because most of the time you want to use those accuracies. So I just don't find it all that useful. Number 3, the MS-1 Ion Cannon. It's pretty cheap, it's only 2 points. Once again, it's situational because you have to get that blue critical, but since it's so much cheaper, inclined to use it more. You get to choose and exhaust one of the defender's upgrade cards. There's a good chance that your opponent may not even have an upgrade card that can be exhaustible. However, with all the new nasty powers that are coming out with the interdictor and the more officers that are probably going to be used more often, this could be useful, but make sure you give it the proper deployment and positioning for the right target ship. Number two is to overload pulse. Again, situational, it's a blue critical, so it doesn't happen all that often. However, the fact that you get to exhaust all of the defender's defense tokens, particularly if you pair it up with a second ship, or even better, the ISD Avenger, in order to provide an incredible knockout second punch. You have the right ships in the right order, and you have this one attack first, so that the other one can hammer it. It's useful. Number one is Leading Shots. This is a great card, particularly for MC-80s and ISDs that can spare giving up an extra dice. It really helps for those bad rolls and allows you to keep the dice that you like, unlike some other powers. It's less useful if you have an admiral that allows you to modify your dice as well, so I wouldn't use this and have one of those admirals, but for the most part, I find this is the most useful ion cannon upgrade. So, that is the end of the turbolaser and ion cannon upgrade section. 
Do any of you disagree with my rankings? Is there a certain pairing that I forgot about that you find to be particularly useful? Please let me know in the comments and continue listening to the rest of the series. Thank you and goodbye.